Hello, everyone. Today is Friday, August 26th, 2022. My name is Evan. Welcome back to another edition of Stock Market Weekly presented by The Trade Risk, where it is our job to break down the most important trends, price action, and noteworthy moves across financial markets. There were a lot of noteworthy moves this week. We've got tons to cover. So we're going to jump into it. For new traders that are just tuning in here, first off, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining us. We break up our analysis into two parts. So in this first part, we're going to look through the numbers and pick apart everything that stands out, looks different, interesting, or notable. And then in part two, we're going to jump into the charts. We're going to look at price action with a very close lens and those bigger picture trends and try and best position ourselves looking ahead. So let's get into some of the big headlines this week. First and foremost, on Friday, we had Jerome Powell arriving on his hawk. So we had the Jackson Hole speech and traders were sort of uh, anticipating this to be uh, a potentially catalyzing event, but I do not think the market was pricing in such a big move here following this announcement. We did see markets basically selling off a little bit, creeping lower in anticipation to this event. I guess that was until Thursday where we got a little bit of a bounce in the market, but then we gave it all back. We saw follow through selling this week, strong follow through selling after last week's reversal. We've got the 10 year treasury yield north of 3%. This was the largest one week VIX move all year. So even despite the earlier selling in the first half of the year, VIX was up the largest on a one week change basis. And we've got a bunch of short term indicators that we're going to be looking at later in part two. You're not going to want to miss that. So we're going to really sort of break down just the, the magnitude and, and intensity of, of the move that we saw this week and see if we can put some context around it and turn it into opportunity. Now, if we look here at the numbers, right hand column it was again just a very ugly week here pretty much all of these losses materializing on friday of this week uh so just really single day these 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 are one week numbers but they're frankly almost one day numbers so s p 500 down four percent nasdaq almost five percent russell did the best and then world stocks on a relative basis outperforming the united states i think the big takeaway here as well is if we look at the one month look back period here you can see that we're back into red territory how quickly the gains evaporate here so we are now uh, back to even and treading around slightly negative over a one month look back. Now, if we take a look at our stock market trends here, we've got some changes as well. So the 10 period simple moving average is now declining across all of the major indices here. Notice though, we are still sandwiched with the 50 SMA, which is rising. I think this actually would surprise many traders, but if you're a fan of the 50 period simple moving average, it has and still is, uh, continues to rise here as markets sort of pull back. I believe in most cases, markets are still above their uh, 50 SMA or challenging them right now. And so we're definitely gonna wanna pay closer attention to that and we'll talk about that in part two. Now, the volatility environment was tough out there. Again, like I said, it was the biggest move up in the VIX. This is a change of character. If you recall, the VIX has been on this sort of perpetual slide here for about six weeks or so. Uh, it started to perk up, or I guess it at least you know, kind of broke even, perked up a little bit last week. But this week it was up again, five points here back to 25.65 as the market sort of knee jerks higher. Uh, I'm sorry, knee jerks lower, the VIX knee jerks higher. And if we look at the NASDAQ 100, well, that's back north of 31. So, or north of 30, which is, you know, again, just that big psychological level for the VXN. That's the NASDAQ volatility, which was up almost five points as well this week. All right, now if we take a look at what the what I consider to be the smart money is pricing in for the September 21st, which is the next Fed meeting where we'll actually get an adjustment to the federal funds rate, we are seeing that the market has been inching higher here on a 75 basis point increase come September 21st. Now, I took this screenshot shortly after the market closed on the CME's website. I don't know if it's been updated. It looks like it does have a timestamp here. So it looks like it's fairly up to date, but I'm actually surprised that we're still only at a 60% odds likelihood of a 75 basis point move. I would have expected, especially after the, the announcement or the, the speech here on Friday, that this number would have been even higher. Uh, but 
you know, that being the case, this is currently the split right now on what the market is implying for next month. So this is uh, basically been edging higher here in favor of the 75 basis point move. And of course, as that starts to, you know, that has ripple effects into uh, all of financial securities and markets as everything gets sort of repriced based on uh, the federal funds rate or the anticipated rate. So uh, we're going to continue to watch this, but that's certainly been, um, you know, certainly the highlight here over the over the past uh, quarter or so as we uh, hinge on every word that uh, the Fed is making. Now, if we take a look at market internals here, you can see that uh, we are starting to tip more definitively back into the bearish camp here. More 52-week lows were made. We had 336 lows made this week in the NYSE. That's 52-week lows. We had 135 52-week highs made this week for a differential of minus 201. So again, we're back to making more new lows rather than new highs. That is a uh, bearish case, right? That is a bearish development. We've been tracking this. We saw essentially over the past few weeks on the market run-up, we saw a uh, effectively the number of lows uh, totally dry up we also saw the highs dry up but then we started to get this small brief window where there were starting to be more highs made than lows and now we're starting to tip back into this other direction so we're going to continue to watch this every single week as we do and track it but for now uh we got to keep a closer eye on this and of course friday's numbers as i always like to mention they're not finalized numbers here i always take a preliminary sort of uh snapshot or guesstimate myself uh before the final numbers roll in now if we take a look at sector performance this week there was only one savior here is energy up 4.27 percent and it is uh one of three sectors which are hanging on to positive gains over the past one month materials were in the second spot utilities were in the third spot both of those were negative and on the downside we saw technology was the hardest hit this week it was down 5.58 percent that was the darling that was leading us higher over this market run up over the past six weeks technology and biotech consumer discretionary was second worst and cons uh, communication services in the third worst underperforming spot here minus 4.4 percent now, 10-day correlations, I think, are actually pretty interesting here. I mean, you're still seeing tons of bright green and bright red on this chart, which basically just shows that things are correlated. And in the case of equities, everything's kind of lockstep and trading together. In the case of the dollar, oil, and the 10-year treasury yield, we've got strong negative inverse correlations in all three of these to exactly what equities are doing. So you've just got this perfect inverse relationship. What is the dollar doing? What's oil doing? What are interest rates doing? That's basically uh, going to tell you exactly what equity markets are doing and it's just the exact opposite and this continues to be a very or really strengthened this week in terms of being uh, inversely correlated and of course we know uh, given everything on macro why that is the case one other thing is interesting here is bitcoin starting to lose its correlation kind of fading down into not a whole lot and again as i remind uh, these are 10-day correlations these are inherently short-term and noisy now, Treasury yields this week were up. Um, uh, surprisingly, though, they, they weren't up huge. And, and what I guess I would say here is that the bond market, um, you know, sort of got it right or or, or sort of um, anticipated maybe the, 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 the rhetoric out of uh, Jackson Hole a little bit better uh, than, the, than the stock market did because we did see interest rates kind of creep higher, more so in the short term. The longer term, though, you could see was actually, you know, uh, more of a subdued move. Uh, and in fact, the 30-year Treasury yield actually declined this week slightly down to 3.2%. Uh, but here, you know, what you can basically see is that we are back over this 3% level here for the 10-year. It's just a big cycle logical level. Um, and, and again, that's just going to put a lot of pressure on growth stocks, high risk stocks and or stocks that are uh, discounting cash flows way out in the future. And, um, you know, we really want to see that back in with a two handle if we're going to get a lot more excited about technology and those very uh, growth type names. Last but not least here, dollar and commodities. So, uh, d you know, DBA uh, is our proxy for just the agriculture ETF here. It was up 3% this week. Crude oil was up uh, and the dollar index continued higher this week. Uh, so despite that, we still did see increases there in crude oil and ag. Uh, natural gas was down slightly. Gold was down half percent on the week. Silver was down 1%. Bitcoin down 3.83%. So again, not actually a, a tremendous amount of movement here on in terms of uh, commodity front. 
So that's it. That is what we got for our first half here of our stock market weekly video. If you do want to continue on, we've got a lot of cool indicators and charts and, and price action uh, dissection that we are going to do in the second half. So I do encourage you if you want to get more in to the weeds here for this week's analysis, subscribe at thetraderist.com forward slash SMW. You can buy this single episode. It's five bucks. Get the full length version. We're going to go on for about another 10, 15 minutes of analysis. Or if you want to subscribe and save to our monthly membership here. It's 15 bucks, basically gets you one free video a month, supports the show and gets you more analysis. So that is it for this first half. For those of you continuing on, we're gonna continue in just a second. Have a great weekend, everyone. And we'll talk to you next week.